We'll be closing up the series of videos about uh, creating housings with Schaeffer housing profiles based on the Schaeffer assembly manual, the one that we have been looking at from their website, by looking at all the advanced features that are found inside the Schaeffer housings script. And that means manuals mode, there's no uh, GUI um, in this case. Um, but just to quickly show you where we are at, if we are in uh, front design, we have, um, if, if we uh, open scripts, select Schaeffer housings, press start. The GUI is that you get to select whether you want an enclosure with side profiles or enclosure profiles. Okay, and then you can adjust some things. You press create, uh, let's do it like that, and then it creates a number of panels for you. So that's basically um, the GUI, and this is what we are now going to leave behind for good. In, um, with the various enclosures we have been uh, doing so far, actually we created these two boxes using the GUI. We also created a rack controller like this one using the GUI. We created a console type enclosure not using the GUI. That was a manual operation too. And I'm going to refer a few times to what we did with this one uh, because there are some settings I'm not going to explain once again. Okay, so, but let's get started. Uh, how do we then use this in a manual way? You go to uh, scripts, select the same scripts again, and then you open uh, the, the script by pressing this button. So now you see the script here and you can then scroll down. And uh, what we did uh, in order to create the enclosure, um, the uh, console type enclosure, was to uh, first uh, set this uh, value to false, uh, as I just did, because then the GUI will not open. And then you have very nice description of all the settings following here. Okay, so the first thing you need to determine is the enclosure type. Is it based on site profiles or is it based on housing profiles? Is it side profiles or housing profiles? Just get a close up here. You can see this. Um, these two boxes are almost the same uh, size. Um, this one has side profiles and this one has housing profiles. So that's the difference we see right there. Okay, then you need to determine if you are using housing profiles, are you going to use profile type number one or two? And uh, if you remember, Profile number two were the profiles here, which allowed us to slide in a square nut and then uh, fix um, a screw from top. If you select housing profile two for the top surface, like this one has, and which is the default in the script, automatically a number of holes will be placed at the correct uh, distance, uh, which will allow you to, to fix uh, um, a top surface like that one. Okay, uh, with the console type enclosure, we disabled that feature actually, but we could also enable it. But notice as it says that it has to be uh, opposing sides. Uh, you cannot do it for like left and top. It has to be top and bottom for instance, but we could do that top and bottom. If I select true here, we would then get it, get it top and bottom. Okay, so a very fundamental setting of course is the width, height and the depth. And uh, the settings you see in the script right now are the settings used for, for these um, boxes, which basically came out with the default settings of the script. Um, then if you uh, go to the thickness array, the thickness array will currently uh, give you a front, which is four millimeter and a top back button left and right side, which is 2.5 millimeter thick. And here, of course, you can only use values which are supported by uh, Schiffer's uh, service um, basically as it says right here you can have two two and a half three and four millimeter generally um, there are some other sizes that exist too but they are typically limited in certain ways uh, so we we'll just go with the standard measures here um, actually in in these cases here uh, all sides on these boxes were 2.5 millimeters but as it's as it is set up right now by default uh, the, the front panel would actually be 4 and the back panel would be 2.5. Um, the color array determines what color is used for the various sides. 
Um, and then we have something with housing brackets and so on. Okay, let's just um, execute this and see what happens. Okay, so in the background here, you can see we have a lot of scripts just created. We have the front script here. And as I just said, uh, on the front, we will have a four millimeter panel because that's what was set in the script. Top, if you notice the thickness was 2.5 here. Back 2.5, button 2.5, left 2.5, and right is 2.5. Also notice that they are all blue apart from the back. The back is gray. And if you go back to the script, you can see this is because the back was defined to be natural and the other ones were blue. Okay, and we have the depth there and height, width and so on is also in place. Now let's take a look at what happened when we decided to make the profile in the bottom true. Uh, if we go back to the scripts here, um, you can see that the bottom and the top are both uh, ex exactly the same. If, if you go back and look at um, the video where I showed you how to create this box, you saw uh, when I looked at the panels that the front panel and the back panel were in fact different because they are assembled in different ways in this. Um, and because we have the guide engravings enabled for um, the renderings currently, we can, uh, we can actually see uh, a lot of things uh, from the, um, the uh, guide engravings. One thing you can, you can see if you look in the bottom of, um, of the view, you can actually see that the front, it says front. You can see that the front is indicated to be four millimeter thick compared to the back where you can see it is uh, 2.5 um, millimeter thick, more or less. At least, it's, at least you just see an indication this is the case. Um, yeah, I just mentioned that because I just saw it. Okay, what else can, can we say? Um, yeah, let's, let's look at it from, from uh, yeah, the back would be fine because here we can actually, on the back, we can really clearly uh, see if you look at the corner of both the top and the bottom, you can see housing profile number two being used, the one where you can slide a square nut into this slot. And then uh, when you looked at, at the top profile, you could easily see how there was actually a screw hole and this orange box here indicates the housing profile, the extent of that. This is the screw hole and, um, and um, that was the slot. Now we're looking at the front panel. Uh, now we go back to the back panel, it's the same stuff. Um, the same thing goes on in the bottom. Okay, so what happens if I go to my script and I disable these two, set them to false. So I set them to false which is uh, what I did when I created this enclosure and we execute the script. Then we should now see that housing profile number one is used in all cases and that will be clear when we look at the front or the back panel. Uh, if, if you see here, you see housing profile number, number one, housing profile number one, and that also affects how the top and the bottom cover plates were rendered because now the top and the bottom cover plates, they have a cavity here on the sides as well as on the back, but it's the sides which are interesting here. That cavity makes it possible to, um, if I'll just go to the back, I like it better when I see this on the gray background. But now we have zoomed in and here you can see how a, ca a cavity of one millimeter is needed on the top and the bottom panels in order for them to lay flush with the, with the housing profile on, on the top. So that's what you actually saw there. Okay, that, that, that brings me to another thing because when you, if you remember this controller, you, you saw that um, my, um, uh, my, my panels were a little bit recessed compared to uh, the, 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 uh, the plane of the housing profiles. And uh, I called that feature uh, ex some side extension, I think. And uh, this will be really easy to demonstrate right now because if you remember that we currently cut a cavity on the top side of the front and the back panels in order to keep them flush or in the same plane as the housing profiles. Then just see what happens when we go to adjust that parameter. This is, um, yeah, like any other parameter, quite uh, often necessary to see it demonstrated. Okay, just, just for the fun of it, I'll just make this parameter side expansion offset and this is something that you set for 
Okay, now let's see. I set it now for the top and the bottom. If you, if you want to see it closer. Uh, I set it for top and the bottom, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and uh, then left and right is just 0. Okay, I'll just keep left and right 0. Um, or maybe I'll just do it for the top, actually. Okay, so it's just the top, 0 0.5, it's moving up, and uh, I'm starting this, um, running the script, and then you look at, um, let's take the back, let's zoom in. So, now, remember how it was just before. So, before, the panel top was flush with the housing profile, now it is actually raised 0.5 millimeters. I would say that's the wrong direction. I want to recess it instead, but it demonstrates the purpose of that parameter. So now that I go back and I type in, let's say, minus 1.5 and run this, and we zoom in, Okay, so now you can see that it is actually recessed, yes, but it's even recessed too far. Now it's 1.5 millimeter down, but the housing profile is only one millimeter on this uh, part of it. So I can, um, I, it, the real value I should use is probably one. But as you can see, it's now going in the other direction and I get also a cavity on the bottom side. And that's also clear if you look at the top panel, you can see on the top panel, you have now a cavity on the bottom side of the panel instead of the top side. Uh, of course, you could also choose a value, something like minus 0.5, like that. And that means you get now a cavity on both sides because the panel is 2.5 millimeter and the, the slot it should fit into is 1.5 millimeter. How will you know all those things? Well, um, if you go to Schaeffer's uh, housing, um, manual you see all the the true meshes the true meshes of the housing profile so here you can see how, how the house, housing profile aluminum is actually uh, um, how it measures up um, just if, if you were curious okay i think i got this executed so let's go and and look at how the the, the scripts look uh, if i go and look at the back and there you see i recess it now only 1 uh, 0 0.5 millimeter, so I still have 0 0.5 millimeter down to the level of the housing profile. And there you can see I get a cavity on the top side and on the bottom side. Really no point. Probably you want to avoid that because cavities are really expensive in terms of, of milling. So avoid that, but it's just to show you what we are doing. So what is typically the case and was the case for this um, box was that I used a parameter of minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 and minus one, which means that when you look at a close-up of my sides here, you see that the top and the left side and bottom and right side are recessed just one millimeter, so it's nicely fitting in like, like you see on, on, on that box. Okay, so that was the side expansion offset. Uh, I jumped down in, in the parameters a little uh, bit, as you can see. Um, we, we discussed already the, um, the housing profile right height. Uh, that was related to how you create a console type enclosure like this. Uh, the parameter dry run is um, useful in the sense that if you set it to true and, and you run the script, then uh, it only renders a single panel. You can see all my series of panels here has been labeled. Um, has been labeled uh, dash six, dash whatever, and now we have a front dash seven. Um, so that, that can be useful to, um, to use the uh, dry run parameter if you wanna render only uh, the, the front panel and not everything else. Um, you can also have the panel names come out. So what if I write Casper and uh, Skahoy like that and uh, start, then you see now uh, all the panel which are rendered are you know, pre and suffix by some label, which is useful for automatic generation. Um, okay, I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, guide engravings, true, false. I can set it to false, means that I don't get those uh, guide engravings. So if I render, you can see now I get a front, no guide engravings. Uh, I can set it to true, and then I get guide engravings. And one uh, interesting thing that uh, Schiffer told me, or just pointed out to me really, is that um, uh, quite often what I like to do is to work with a full panel with the guide engravings 
for quite a long time because I, I want to uh, position various cutouts and so on and the guide engravings will tell me where are the housing profiles so it will help me to make sure that I'm not colliding any of my cutouts with underlying features in the box. Uh, but then eventually when you have s placed all your cutouts you want to remove the guide engravings and um, therefore you can use this feature called selection according to type and here you basically select text engraving, HPGL engraving, engraving object that's all the types of engravings that could be in play um, we use text engravings because I have small labels like it says top, left, bottom, right and that will tell you um, Okay, that means basically that the, the, the top panel is the one that you see here from the end, the left panel is the one you see from the end, and so on. So that's text engravings. I think I'm using HPGL engravings for the housing bracket uh, profiles, and engraving objects, I'm not really sure, I don't think I'm using that. But anyway, if we select all those, right click and select delete, I now, ha now have a, a, a clean panel. Of course, it would have removed all your own engravings that you added afterwards as well. So just, you know, think about it for a few times. Um, ah, one, one trick there, if you want one trick, let's say that you put an engraving uh, something like that. Oh, what am I spilling? All right, like that, okay. So we put this. Okay, so if you go and look at what is the pricing of this object, then uh, one way to have an indication that you are still having old guide engravings is if you see a multicolored charge for engravings, then you can be certain that you have probably missed something. Um, all the guide engravings are generally orange, so they are easy to see, uh, but you definitely don't want to forget any of them. So uh, maybe what you would do is to select them all according to object type and then deselect your own engravings. Let's see what happens then if I delete and I look at the price then you'll see there's an engraving infill charge but there's no multicolor charge. So this was in this case the, the right way. Okay, actually I'm going back uh, two steps because now I'm talking about guide engravings which are a really cool feature. It's also really cool if you uh, learn how to use them for printing because if you... Uh, wait a sec, I think maybe even they have like a um, outline mode. Yeah, outline mode, that shows me, uh, shows us more or less, you know, what I mean. Because in outline mode you see the panel in, yeah, outlines. And that includes, it turns out, the engravings too. So um, it, this gives you a really nice and, and printable view. And that's actually what you get, the outline mode. I'm now disabling it. That's, I think generally, yeah, if you, if you choose this option, the print in wire mode there, you get a, um, okay, so there are a few things you could print there. But that gives, gives you, um, and now I create a PDF. I now have a really nice PDF file with a profile view of my um, Schiffer enclosure with all the details I could uh, wish to see. Um, so that's, that's pretty neat. Okay, that was a small detour around um, guide engravings, but um, they all come out of the script uh, and something that you enable with this parameter. Um, okay, what else do we have? Edge grinding. Edge grinding means that Sheffer will grind the edges of your panels before they are shipping them to you. It turns out that it's a really good thing to select edge grinding for front and back panels on these controllers because they are typically exposed for you to see and you don't like to see them uh, blank and with tool marks. So uh, pay a little bit for guy, uh, edge uh, grindings and if you enable that feature in the script it's automatically being placed as a remark on the panel. So uh, when edge grinding is true, then for the front and the back panel, you'll see that, and this is the front panel, you'll see that in the remark field, you have actually, it says, please grind the edges. So it's already put in there, and that's, uh, that can be uh, really useful. Round corners, yeah, okay, the script says they have round corners to accommodate to the profiles. Um, and then we have something with rag ears. Let's just get back to that in a moment. Okay, so um, what we have left here in uh, the advanced script is a lot about um, housing brackets and also the use of slots and cavities. 
Um, so I'll get back to that in the next video, but um, we can just quickly look at the last few things we have here. Uh, create an, or an order. Create order. If you set this to true, it means that an order will be created. And the really cool thing about that is that it will select the right types of um, uh, screw kits. Like uh, you, you need a different kit for side profiles and housing profiles, and you need a number of uh, housing brackets typically. And all those things are tracked by the script. And if you set create order to, to true, it will um, make sure that they are put in your basket so you don't forget to order them. Uh, and that goes for the length of the housing profiles and so on too, and the, and the number of profiles that you need to order and so on. So it's really good for the last step. As an example, let's set it to true and press start. But you have seen this happening a few times before. Ah, okay, I think actually I have driver on set to true. So if I set that driver on to true and press, it should now open the ordering application. And yes, here it does. You can see four times housing profile number one. The length has to be 60, uh, ah, 73.5. Uh, millimeters, um, and that's probably to achieve a, a depth of 80 millimeters. Remember that we had a 4 millimeter front panel and a 2.5 millimeter back panel, so that's uh, 6.5, and if you subtract that from 80, you get 73.5 millimeters. Also, it has included a screw kit of the right type, so it is really useful to be able to create that. All you need to do from this point is to go to Front Panel Designer and for the, the number of panels it has created, save them, put them into the basket and you're good to go. You can just pay and order and you have it back in a few weeks from Schaefer. Okay. Um, uh, order black items, yeah, that is if you create black items like this one, you may want to have the profiles and the screws in, in black. They are typically a black and a silver variant of um, their kits. So before we go and look at the housing uh, bracket things and the assembly slots, which are the last advanced features, let's take a look at these additional features. Extra front width and height. Okay, uh, a height. Uh, let's try front width. I set it to 100. I press, uh, I, I think I'll just dry run through so we don't, and I set order back to false like that. Okay, start. Okay, so what does that give me? Ha! Huh. As you can see, it gives me an extra 100 millimeters of space on either side. Okay, so you can see in the middle we have like the body of, uh, of, of the uh, enclosure, but the, the front panel becomes wider. And where this is really nice is if you want to create rack units. Um, but just to show you that you can do exactly the same for the height. So if I do this for the height and set the front back to zero, we run there. Yeah, okay, you get 100 millimeters extra space uh, top and bottom, okay? Uh, so let's try to create a rack unit. Uh, well, this is where the next feature comes in, which is called rack gears. If you set that to true like that, it will add holes for rack mounting. And if I just press start and now have the extra front width set to zero, like you see here, uh, yeah, we get a problem because now we have rack holes right there, right there, right there in the middle of some screw holes. That's not gonna work. Okay, so what you need to do is to think a little bit here and read what, uh, or calculate a little bit and read what it says in, in, uh, in this text. Um, Actually, what you need for a rack unit is to manually figure out how wide should it be, how high should it be, and then the rack gears are, are placed at the right location. Uh, this is all put into the comments, and I think I'm writing something like, if you want to create a 19-inch unit, make sure that two times this value, the extra width, plus the width of the controller equals 483. Okay. So let's say that 483, we currently have a controller which is 100 millimeters wide. So that leaves us 3800, uh, 30, 383 millimeters. So 383 is 191.5. So if I type that in here, extra front width, 109.5. Oh. 
like that, rag yes true and uh, press start, then we'll get something that looks pretty much like a rag unit. And let's see, it is 483.0 wide. So this will work out for a rack unit. Uh, we haven't looked at the height. The height is 60 millimeters. So it is not a standard measure. If you want to hit one, two, three U, then you need to adjust that too. All right, so that was part one of the advanced introduction to this script. And uh, see you for part two, where we'll be looking at assembly slots and housing brackets.